Welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope that I will be able to answer the question as to how to determine the pot size when you get an orchid in and you've cleaned it up. What are you going to do with it? Which pot size is best for it? Because basically what we were trying to achieve is not to disturb the orchid for as long as possible until the next repot, bar any kind of issues that may come up in between. Let's exclude all that. Let's just say we have got a great orchid and we just don't want to bother it for another two, three years. Maybe four would be ideal because the longer we leave an orchid undisturbed in a pot, the better it is for the orchid and its development. Roots being a big, big factor in our hobby because without the roots, we don't get healthy orchids and it's always an issue getting the roots to be happy in the pot climate. So I'm hoping that I can do this subject justice because I do happen to have some candidates that I still have that are bare root, not potted up. But of course, I'm already thinking ahead, how am I gonna pot them up? Which pots do I want to prepare and get ready for when they are ready? And I've got two different varieties here because actually the shape of the pot doesn't really matter. If you're gonna pot your orchid up, that's not the point. But if I were to show you just the square pots, I don't want to be misleading if you're new to my channel, I also use round pots and the same principle applies, but it just so happens that I want to show you that no matter the shape of the pot, the issue is what size do I use for an orchid that has come in bare root so that I don't disturb that orchid for as long as possible. Disclaimer, I grow in inorganic media. So leka, lava, akadama, grit, ceramis. In many cases, however, what I'm about to tell you also applies for organic media with a few little tweaks here and there. The major factor with organic media being the time of year when you're potting up. That will also determine pot size. So if I'm not going to cover that subject properly in greater detail and you want to hear more about why I'm saying what I'm saying when it comes to organic growing, please leave me your opinion in the comments below and I will address that in a separate video if this video turns out to be too long. And sorry for this long intro, but there's so many disclaimers when it comes to orchid growing, environment, climate, orchid attributes, and that's what I'm gonna show you regarding roots and the decision-making process. And then there's obviously, are you growing outdoors or indoors? Is it controlled? Is it not? Is it a rescue orchid or not? So you see, there are so many factors, but what I want to address here now is determine by the roots which pot size I'm going to be using to pot my orchid up in without having to disturb it long term so that it can acclimate and grow without us interfering constantly. Inorganic media is my jam. So let's get a little bit closer because I need to show you roots, etc. And I'm going to clear off the round pots. I'm going to just work with my square pots because these are the pots I've determined based on the setup that I'm using for the orchids I'm going to show you today. The round pots are all self-watering. They have a mask and an inner pot. Okay, so that is not what these candidates are going to be potted up in. I'll be focusing on semi-hydroponics. Know that, once again, it doesn't matter the setup. It is important to get the pot size as accurate as possible from jump so that the orchid is left undisturbed. Right, let's get to it. Thank you for understanding why such a long intro. Know that this is small, medium and large. You can go extra large, you can go extra small. Whatever it is that your orchid is about to do, it is ideal to know the attributes of your orchid. So let's take a bare root orchid here. Let's have a look at this. What are we dealing with? Very, very small orchid. We only have three little bulbs. And normally you would think, okay, with these three little bulbs, there's not much going on. There's not much space required in the pot, so it would go into a small pot. And that works beautifully. Absolutely not a problem. It wouldn't be an issue. However, if we look at the roots, even though some of them are dead, these are still telling us a story. So the roots are fleshy. You can see that they have a fleshy characteristic. They can get quite long, all right? So if we keep them healthy, they'll be long. Do they branch? Yes, they do, but it appears that in the setup, maybe whatever previous setup it had, it wasn't that happy. So it could possibly have the tendency to branch more vigorously if the climate and culture of the pot is correct. So we'll go with 
thinking positively and we'll think, okay, we're gonna get this root system to branch. We have some viable roots as well. There's not many of them, but we're looking at what is the potential of the orchid? How long am I going to be able to leave my orchid in the pot without disturbing it? In this pot, definitely two years, not an issue, possibly three. But if I'm going by the root characteristics, I would want to bump it up a bit because I want to encourage that root growth and it should become the dominant factor in the pot. And because I'm growing in inorganic media, I can do that because I can control how much water is in the reservoir or if I'm going to let the orchid go dry. So to my understanding, I'm only going by what I'm seeing the roots are doing. Fleshy, chunky, I'm just ignoring everything about the growth habit of the orchid at this point in time. I am really focusing on the culture of the roots and have them happy long term, not disturbing the orchid. And this is going to give me years and years and years that I don't have to disturb her. If I get the roots right in the smaller pot, I would have to probably disturb her in about three years, which is not so bad, but why? With inorganic growing, why do we have to do that? We don't. I could also bump the orchid up into this pot with inorganic growing, but that just now looks really, really ridiculous from an aesthetic point of view. So let's go with a happy medium. This is gonna give me at least five years, if not six, bar any issues. Again, just making that disclaimer, as long as the orchid stays healthy, won't need to touch it for five or six years. That is pretty good. Doesn't mean that the structure of the orchid is gonna completely fill the pot. Woo, if she does, even better. It's about the roots. Another little example here, we can see a sorry little root system, but regardless of the looks, they are viable. But we can also see that the root system is fleshy. It's probably not going to be as vigorous as it is long or short, but it will grow to a degree and then eventually stop. Do I see branching on this one? No, nope, not really. But you see what we get here from a nursery, it's possibly that it was in a very shallow, short pot. So that could stunt the roots in their growing potential. Now, I have another Sincorana and I've already studied the Sincorana that I've already had in my collection for two years. Let me show you. Here she is. But you see, could it be my ambient dry air that is stopping the roots from growing? I don't know how long the roots are in the pot doesn't worry me, but you see the pot size here and how the roots are already coming up to the edge. And you can see the similar stop characteristic of root growth, maybe because of the size of the pot that this was in. Now, in order to learn more about this orchid, I could put her into this little pot here and that would be absolutely fine. I could put her up into this little pot and that is absolutely fine as well. Same thing, big pot, don't disturb for the rest of its life. But that just looks ridiculous. So this is an eight centimeter pot right here. This one would be an 11 by 11 centimeter pot. And I, that would give me a bigger pot size to put this orchid in. However, with all the crocking and the media at the base, I'm already going to stunt the depth of the pot and the length and width of the pot. So I want to see what these roots do to get to know a Sincorana better. I'm putting her into the medium sized pot giving the roots the chance to grow to their optimal length and then learn if it is about pot size with regards to this orchid that has stunted its previous root attempts. Same with here with my ambient air. Or if the orchid is capable of giving a great root system with long roots, only time will tell. But in this decision making process, she is going into a medium sized pot. Here we have a little candidate with very fine roots. Can we see any branching potential? Yes, we can. There's a little bit of an attempt of branching. We could encourage that by giving it a better climate in its new setup, but they're very fine. And so is the orchid. Now, this is where I come into time of year with regards to what am I going to do pot size in organic growing. And for the fact that it is September, when I'm potting this one up, we're heading into winter. Yes, she is a cool to cold grower, and that is okay if she were happy and healthy to consider her pot size for long-term, but she's not happy and healthy. So she's going to need a little bit of maintenance 
before she can totally adapt to the climate of the pot, to the media, and to my environment. So for this one, I could put her into the middle pot because again, in organic growing, it doesn't matter the size of the pot, but I have better control with regards to how I'm going to be able to maintain her preferences before she acclimates into my setup with semi-hydro, she would like to have a wet dry cycle. And that is what I can do and achieve much, much easier in a smaller pot. So this little Sophronitis coccinia would go into a small pot based on the fact that the roots are much, much finer and the fact that she is weak and I can not control as well a wet dry cycle in a bigger pot as I can in a small one. So my decision here, she would go in a small pot. So let's study a root system now that is a shambles, but there's a lot we can decipher and glean from what we're seeing here. Once again, we're going to ignore the fact that maybe the roots weren't happy in their environment. They died off for whatever reason. It could also be a pest problem, just drying out. There's lots of reasons why that is not the issue, but what is, what is their potential? The size of the orchid in this case is not actually, once again, my main point of reference. I'm not looking at what the orchid structure is doing. I'm looking at what can this root system achieve long-term if we can help her survive. Disclaimer, if we can help her survive, but long-term, let's go with what we see. They are long. They can be much, much longer, for sure. These have all broken off, it's very clear. But what are we seeing here at the base? Look at the consistency and the characteristics of the roots, the little nubbins that we're trying to make it. Look at them at the base, they're fleshy. They can have substance to them. Even though the orchid and its growth habit is a very tight growth habit, we could put it into a smaller pot, but for how long? We could put it in a medium-sized pot, but again, for how long? If we're thinking ahead, we want to think positively, we can put her in a big pot because these roots obviously are broken and damaged and somehow snapped off somewhere. These roots tell us how long her roots and how vigorous they can get. And then the size of the roots also give us an inkling of what we can expect with the correct pot climate. Now, this orchid is also very weak. And despite the fact that I'm going into winter, when I do get to pot her up, I'm putting her straight away into the big pot because I'm anticipating active and very vigorous root growth, no matter that the orchid itself looks rather silly in this size pot. I am going by what the roots are telling me, whether they're dead or alive the structure, the consistency, and the potential in length. So this one would go in a very, very big pot. As an example, here I have a semi-hydro setup with a Lelia flava, and you can see also similar structures of this orchid with the large and long pseudobulbs. This one has long pseudobulbs as well, and similar kind of leaf structure, everything looks similar. If I didn't have this example, Again, the roots would give me everything I need to know about how to potter up for long-term establishing in one pot without disturbing. So this one just so happens that I had an example. I had her in Lekka and self-watering before I changed her into my classic Rapicula setup of semi-hydro with lava rock, akadama, and all the good stuff that's in there. But when I unpotted her from the Lekka, I almost regretted taking that step because she looked fabulous long, long roots, not prone to branching, but long. They had like a spaghetti-like texture. It was amazing. Based on the size of the orchid, at the time, I could have put her in a small-sized pot and that would have looked beautifully, aesthetically, and in proportion. However, the roots at the time when I took her out of the Lekka and put her into the setup, they were just so amazing. And it was about the roots. And it was because of the roots and their structure and their characteristics is why I put her into a big pot so the more roots that she grows, the happier she will be. Hasn't bloomed for me yet, but we do have a sheath. However, it might look silly to begin with. Enter Lelia fulfuracea, which was recently potted up. That looks really silly, right? I could have gone with a small pot. Only three bulbs to show for. What's the difference? Why did I go with medium? 
while her roots told me the story, similar to this one right here, they were long, they were not branching at all, but they were super long. And then when she started growing her roots, why would I want to enclose those roots in a tiny, tiny pot when I can give them so much more room to maneuver and grow and get longer and longer so that this orchid can establish herself into a healthy specimen one day? Just three bulbs in a medium-sized pot looks really silly. It would have looked cuter, better, and more in proportion with a small pot. However, the roots told me I need to do this because if I get that root ball crutched up in there so fast, too soon, I will be disturbing the orchid one more time. And just as an update, since we did this a couple of weeks ago, look at her. Ta-da! There is a new growth. I hope that's in focus because I am blinded by the light. Anyway, Furfuracea growing a new growth. And she will look silly in this pot for many, many years, but she will be in this pot for many, many years. And in the beginning, it's not about aesthetics, it's about cultivating roots. So let me just wrap this up and just say, okay, all this applies to inorganic growing because I can bump up my pot size no matter what the root system says because my media won't break down. When it comes to self-watering and semi-hydro, of course, ideally, you don't want to be letting the media dry out. Otherwise, the principle of semi-hydro and self-watering is out the window. However, the control is so much better in inorganic media to get a wet dry cycle, regardless of the size of the pot. Dry cycle, in inverted commas, dry or drier, never totally dry, but because of the size of the pot. Now, just not to make it all about Rapiculus lelius, I do not want to mislead just because I'm showing you what's just arrived. I was just showing you those candidates because I have them bare root. What am I going to tell you about an Oncidium in a pot with fine root system? You're just going to have to trust me that this Oncidium has a super, super fine root system and should actually be in a smaller pot, like so. Because you can see the size of the orchid. What is it doing in a medium-sized pot? Again, the root system is so, so vigorous. Two new growths, it's just going to go nuts and it's going to fill out the pot very, very quickly, which is exactly what I want. More roots. I don't want anything getting damaged or crutched. This one was potted up this year in 2021. If I had potted it up into this pot by 2022, I would have to disturb the orchid again. So I've put it into an oversized pot simply because the root system can develop. There is plenty of room for new growths. Probably by 2023, I would have to pot this one up again. However, when it comes to self-watering, you can also say, don't worry about the pot size, etc. But of course, you also want to be prepared for the climate of the winter months, Lekka having an evaporative cooling effect. So you don't want to go too mad with regards to your pot size and how long you don't want to disturb your orchid. You've got to think of the 12 months, the seasons, if you're growing indoors or outdoors. If you're in a controlled environment, I happen not to be. So these factors also will play a part in determining pot size. But major, major decision-making process is the roots, the characteristic of the roots. And how long can that orchid that's going to be potted up be in a pot without getting disturbed because the roots have a lot of room to develop? So this is like a prequel. I always give my thoughts with every repotting, but I wanted a reference video to show my decision-making process in one go. So if you have any questions, if I didn't address something, if I didn't circle back to a thought, please use the comments section below and I'll be very happy to reiterate, to elaborate, or even give other examples. And if there is a question in there that warrants a separate video, I will definitely get onto it and make that video. If this answered all your questions, yippee, my job here is done. Know that I appreciate your time watching this video and I hope that you have yourself a wonderful day. Enjoy your orchids, enjoy the spring that is coming around the corner, enjoy your Indian summer that is coming around the corner and all the blooms and spikes of all the species that are now waking up. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.